You wrote this piece. I want to read the headline and then dive right in. Here's the headline. How a convicted sex offender became the bane of GOP groups robocall efforts. So there's a lot going on there. First, can you talk about who is the person at the center of this story? Sure. Uh, the person is uh, named William J. Hunsaker Jr. He is a uh, former attorney from uh, Colorado. And he the way the story came about was actually really interesting in that I got a tip that the Trump campaign had paid this guy, Hunsaker, $3,900 for legal. And that was the only thing it was described for was legal. It showed up in campaign finance. And the reason that this transaction stuck out to the, the person who passed it along to me was that it was so small. You know, Trump's certainly using his campaign, using his PAC money for legal bills, but what sort of legal bill comes in at $3,900? So this person then Googled the name and the first thing that came up was a uh, State Department press release about his um, going on the lam when he was originally arrested for uh, the, the sexual assault um, allegations. And then if you started looking into this person's, um, if you searched up the, their name in um, court records, you would see that he had filed a couple suits against other groups for violating the do not call list. So that's kind of how the whole thing came together. And can you talk about his crime a little bit? It happened in the early 2000s. What went on there? Uh, yeah, so it was more than 20 years ago in 2003, he was charged with two counts of sexual assault on a child two counts of sexual assault on a child with a pattern of abuse and two counts of conspiracy to commit sexual assault. And those charges stemmed from a series of allegations involving a nine year old boy and an 11 year old and his 11 year old sister, according to government press release. So uh, Hunsaker posted the $350,000 bond, but then failed to appear at a pretrial court appearance. Six months later, he was found in Costa Rica. Hunsaker said in a later court filing that the idea of going on the lam was his lawyer's idea. Uh, his lawyer since passed away, so we were not able to get in touch with the lawyer and find out if that was, in fact, the case. Um, Hunsaker's first trial, the jury acquitted him of four of the charges, deadlocked on the other two. There was then a second trial in June 2006. The jury found him, uh, convicted him of one count each of sexual assault on a child and sexual assault with a pattern of abuse. He was sentenced to 16 years to life in prison, but was paroled in February 2019. So he gets out of jail and then he goes on what you described as this lawsuit spree against political groups. Walk us through that. Sure. So later the year that he got out of jail, 2019, he added his phone number to the National Do Not Call Registry. And, you know, that's that's run by the Federal Trade Commission. I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this are on it. If not, you may want to look into doing it where you, you list your name there and it's to prevent sales calls from, from coming through to you. Uh, but there are certain caveats and uh, you know, political calls are still allowed. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different rules from different organizations based on that. So um, he filed his first lawsuit in July of 2022, where he sought $1,500 in damages from Turning Point USA, the uh, conservative group that tries to recruit kids on college campuses to push for conservative causes. Um, he filed a lawsuit against them for $1,500. Uh, they just said the dispute was resolved amicably. Um, Hunsaker would just say that the case was settled. So I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but it sounds like some sort of payoff may have been made. Um, seven months after that, Hunsaker filed two more lawsuits. One of them was against the Denver Gazette, which is a media outlet in Colorado that has a, a conservative op-ed page. Uh, it's owned by the same owner of the, uh, the Washington Examiner, I believe. And it was that day as well that he also filed a suit um, against Save America and two other Trump fundraising vehicles for $9,000. So um, that was the one that it was the settlement and that most likely for that case is what, what led us to you know, that $3,900 payment and kind of figuring out exactly what's going on here.